Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Dear Pasquale, it is my honor to say a few words to you on this important occasion for the Garante and for all European data protection authorities. Unfortunately, I cannot be here with you in person today as I'm attending the Privacy Symposium in that other beautiful Italian city, Venice. I am very much with you in thoughts and spirit, however, to mark the Garante's 25th anniversary. Today, we celebrate 25 years of Garante, and there's a great deal to celebrate. The data protection landscape in Italy has profoundly changed in the last three decades, not just in Italy, but across the entire European economic area and the world at large, the importance of protecting an individual's data and privacy has become much more prominent than it was in 1997. Since the entry into application of the General Data Protection Regulation, every data protection regulator wears two hats, its head as national authority and its head as ETPP member. The Garante, like its European counterparts, carries out investigations and enforces at the national level to make sure the data of all Italians is protected. At the same time, the Garante has the duty to cooperate with other European supervisory authorities on cross-border cases. It thereby contributes to the protection of data of all Europeans, regardless of where they are living. Over the years, the Garante has become a major and well-respected player, not only in Italy, but also on the European scene. Its many important decisions to protect fundamental rights and freedoms are famous in the data protection community and beyond. However, this anniversary is not only about institution. It is first and foremost about the hard work of a determined and enthusiastic staff who day after day vendono cara la pelle della privacy. They do so under the expert leadership of Presidente Pasquale Stanzione, Vice President Geneva Serena Ferroni and college members Agostino Chilia and Guido Scorza, with whom I had the pleasure to share a session yesterday at the International Symposium in Venice. These determined women and men stand on the shoulders of highly respected and well-known data protection giants. The names of several former Garante Presidents and Secretary Generals not only ring a bell in Rome, but also in Brussels and even in Washington. I think, for example, of Stefano Rodotà, a prominent Italian lawyer and the first Garante, who was also appointed chairman of the Article 29 Working Party in 2000 the predecessor of today's European Data Protection Board. And of course, I also think of Giovanni Buttarelli, who went on to become a much respected European data protection supervisor and who I had the pleasure and honor to work with personally. But as I said, the Garante is very much the sum of all its stuff. Behind these famous names, hide many others that take the right to data protection to heart and make an effort every day to see it respected. In Brussels and in Vienna, we are highly appreciative of the expert knowledge and dedication of the staff members of the Garante. And we have the pleasure of working with these colleagues on a nearly daily basis. All these men and women do their work with the conviction that privacy and the protection of personal data are prerequisites for human dignity. Privacy or the right to a private life, to be autonomous, in control of information about yourself are fundamental rights that are essential to an individual's dignity. Protecting these fundamental rights is the guiding principle underlying the Garante's work and through the Garante's work. The culture of personal data protection has taken hold in Italy. Italians can be truly proud 
of having the Garante as their supervisory authority. It is an authority that has made a real difference to the lives of many Italians, but also of many Europeans often taking on a frontline role in standing up for privacy and data protection. The examples over the past 25 years are numerous, too numerous to list here. Let me just name a few that illustrate how the Garante is not just a supervisor Italians can be proud of, but an authority that has always punched above its weight internationally. Last year, the Garante took on tech giant TikTok with the aim of protecting Italian data subjects, in particular children. The Garante took it on itself to address the risks of this popular video sharing app, especially for young children. As a result of the Garante's pioneering work, TikTok had to change its policies and implement measures to ban access to users aged below 13 years. Another investigation by the Garante that made headlines worldwide is the on into US facial recognition firm Clearview AI. Clearview AI, a company headquartered in the US, reportedly owns a database including over 10 billion facial images from individuals all over the world, which are extracted from public web sources via web scraping. After an investigation by the Garante, Clearview was fined 20 million euro for failing to have a proper legal basis to collect and process Italians' personal data, including biometrics and infringing several other fundamental principles and rules of the GDPR. As well as issuing the fine, the Italian supervisory authority ordered the company to delete all data on persons in the Italian territory it currently holds, to cease all further collection and processing of their data and to designate a representative in the territory of the European Union. Ladies and gentlemen, TikTok and Clearview AI illustrate how the Garante keeps its finger on the pulse of technological developments and stands ready to act when fundamental rights of Italians and Europeans are at risk. I personally want to thank all the Garante staff for its commitment and hard work and I know I speak on behalf of everyone in the audience and everyone in Europe when I say that we are all looking forward to the coming 25 years. Congratulations on your 25th anniversary.